dug into the sacred languages and, and started to see that there was law, Nemosa, and law, Oreta, and discover really what they were, and that Oreta has a really nice Wow, I'm starting to get like tingly all over too. Um, marriage with Aleph, that from a place that has no beginning comes Oreta. And then, so, so that, you know, the sacred languages to me, all, all of a sudden I started not looking at scripture differently is not, I know you guys can relate is not mm -hmm. the right words, which leads me to the words, but um, a knowing and understanding of, we have a lot of cats around here, we rescue cats, and, and if you've ever tried to point to something and get a cat to look at it, <laughs> and, the, right. and the cat stares at the end of your finger, right? Right. <laughs> well, that's what I had been doing for 20 years as far as theology, apologetics. Oh, dude, I was growing up in the Church of Christ spiritually. Oh, my. You want to talk, you know, wanted to argue scripture. Um, and, and, but I was, the scripture was pointing at something, and I was telling people they were holding up the wrong, you're pointing with the wrong finger. And then this this discovery, this this experiential revelation of what Oreta is, like, and that oh wow! So the law of Moses was really like the rules of <laughs> the rules of Moses, the ordinances of, Mo of Moses that actually change over time culturally and religiously and all these different influences on the Mosa. And then, you know, Second Corinthians 3 all of a sudden comes to life. And it's like, I get it now. I get that the law has some glory. Oh, very much so. The Nemosa has a degree of glory. Yes. Because it's, but it's. It's like a half measure. Right. So I say all the time online, words are awesome, but words are symbols of symbols. Yeah. Twice removed from reality. That's a course of miracles. But so the character, Paul, that's that's a whole nother podcast, um, says, you know, the law has a degree of glory. But even today, when the mimosa is read, there's a veil. <laughs> Yeah. And and to have that veil removed and experience Oretha, you can't unsee that. No. You can't That's, unfeel that. You can't no. unknow that. No. And the more and you can point to it, and this is all I try to do now, because I have been cured of evangelism, of saving people, of <laughs> all this stuff. Right? I've been cured of that. I'm like, <laughs> I I can point to the way that that I can point to, in the direction of before the beginning of without a beginning to you. I can't make you see it. That's way above my pay grade. I can't. And if you're not ready for it, you won't see it. No. So I say, Experience. So I say all of that just to say. The, my relationship with, with the sacred languages is, I don't even want to use the word reverence. It's, it's, I have an appreciation because I think that the people speaking these languages vibrationally were closer to Oretta than obviously we are now in Christianity and Islam and all the other namosas that are out there trying to get you to follow their package. Um, and yeah, they all have, they all have a degree of glory, but if I can just get people for just a, a glimpse, just a, a, a millisecond 
to get free of self, space, and time and just experience it one time. That's all it takes. And, 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 but, but, so utilizing social media to do that, and, and this kind of brings us to a, it's a really touchy subject of, of, I've done a couple videos on spiritual ego and, and it's not a bad thing. You know, the truth community has, <laughs> has this war against ego, um, which develops spiritual ego. It's, it's, it's the war against, so I don't know how familiar you are with, with the law of one, the raw material. My view of second Corinthians three sixteen uh, is a little unique. Um, that, I believe whoever wrote that was saying that all scripture, and I believe when in saying scripture, specifically the prophets, was God breathed, that even in the Greek, the word for breathe is a form of pneuma, only used once in the New Testament, which I'm really, really leery when that happens, when they basically kind of make up a word. <laughs> it kind of shows me what was going on in the... Uh, translation process like we don't have a word for this so this one's close we'll just kind of give it a jot or a tittle and you know stick it in there and, and hope that it works but if if he was referring to the prophets the aramaic word for prophet means a clear and open channel and he's got kind of saying that everything out not the law but Everything that, that we call scripture coming from what we call prophets, a clear and open channel. Um, Channeling. Can, is, yeah, but can be used for, and this is why I have a really weird relationship with the character Paul in, in the New Testament. Because I don't, I know the Father, and I know the Father would never use anything divine to force me to do something against my will. Um, so, so the second half of that is all scripture is channel of work and is useful for basically controlling people, getting people to do what you want them to do, rebuking, training, teaching. It's useful for that. Um, so, so I, I, I took a second look at a lot of the channel works, but especially the law of one. And it really resonates with the difference between Oretta and Nemosa. That, that there is a law of one that is Oretta, that is from before the beginning, that is the true law, that is... And I, true is not even the right word. Good night. This is what I hate about words. <laughs> it's like, I know you, you know what I'm trying to say. It, I it's, do. I do. It, it's it's a law that's eternal that doesn't change. The way I explained it to my wife was, if you take a Christian, a Muslim, and a Jew, and you push them off the plane without a parachute, you have broken Nemosa and most cultures called murder um however the rate at which they fall and what happens when they hit the ground is yeah already, yeah it's already predetermined it's well it's, it is what it is it's the it's, same. It's, yeah. yeah right so you know that's the best way that i could sp explain that maybe how jesus would have in a parable kind of um as as the difference between the two, the two are both useful. And and but what I really like about the law of one is is the under is it kind of helped me with ego that that ego is and I'm a tech guy my whole life and so when you say user interface to me, you know a user interface is what what allows people to use websites and software without the user interface, there'd be databases and no ability to use them. So e e ego to me is just how we interface with third density or fourth density, which is upon us. And 
it's not a bad thing. It just, you know, we have our senses. Some of us have a couple extra ones developing right now, which will help us <laughs> interface with Ford density. But to me, the law of one is basically Romans 120. That since before the beginning, God's eternal power in nature me. has been clearly seen. Yeah. Cle clearly perceived in, right. in, the, in the creation. And that, was a lot, that was a lot of rambling. No, it was. I didn't take it Sorry. as rambling. Really. Ken, Ken needs to go to work. So I, I just it. wanted him. He said bye. <laughs> See you, Ken. So he just needed to get to work and I just wanted him to just see you and say hi and that yeah. kind of stuff. So um, I didn't oh. consider that being rambling. You know, I, I am familiar with that material. So it's, yeah, yeah. Well, I thank him because then what, what you posted from him, what he wrote was explaining how all authority given to me is a bad translation. <laughs> it's and it's, okay. a, and it's when I read what he wrote, that's what I got, that all authority given to me is that orata coming through you. If you are Tuveyun, fully blessed, fully present, open, everything's hum meek, humble. The ability for orata to flow through you is all authority in this realm. You know, people... In the, in the truth community all the time. I want to bring heaven to earth. I'm like, that's it right there. Yeah, I think Ken, Ken would say with Orieta would be it's celestial law. Oh, yeah. It's definitely celestial. So it's it's a law that is governing everything below. And, you know, when you tap into it and you understand it, everything changes. Yeah, well, I actually... What it is, it's it's uh, already established as a potential of becoming. It's it's the intention, but we can't comprehend this loftiness until we integrate through the lesser law first. It it allows us to self navigate through humility to render clear what is ego. So ego is actually a, a propulsion device when it's seen correctly. But we have right. to be able to break free of a construct that is inverted to then see that there is a way of validation. Because the celestial law, it seeks its similitude of frequency to call it established. And so it is a means to a purpose. It's very lofty. It's purposed intention, and it, it's looking for the vibration of similitude. Do you think it's fair to say that a knowing of Orita allows ego to become a servant instead of a master? That's exactly why I don't read the law of one. That's exactly why that I said I wasn't trying to be disrespectful is that spirit shared with me that I was no longer requested nor required. And I want to be careful how I say this is this because celestial law has to be found organically. There are those that are finding it organically without another interpolation through another man's directive through channeling. And oh, so I, I know as far as what my mandate and what I'm carrying and as far as personally to me is that it can be found organically without and it just simply is virginity to me is something that's built through intimacies encounters this is pureness of intention and so in that innocence it can be established celestial law of light law of order is established organically and if one man can find it then allows the door to be open to the many oh, so I so the influence is, is crucial and it's been seven or eight years now that i'm just it just the influence has a way of pulling me into another perspective or a paradigm based on another man's perspective and that's fine and that's okay it's just i know for how i'm geared and how i'm wired um the spirit is just like no that this can be defined because that's what it was always intended is for each man to define it through the uniqueness of individuality
This is how sovereignty is established. This is celestial law.